guys. How's it going? Um, first of all, uh, my name is Janie Angeli. Um, I'm going to be talking to you guys today about Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, it's something that I went through um, uh, four years ago, uh, but specifically I want to touch on the points of Hodgkin's lymphoma and uh, the importance and benefits of exercise while going through Hodgkin's. Um, I do want to let you know that I am not by any means a doctor at all. Um, I am just a person that has gone through it and I'm here to share my experience with you and answer any questions that you might have uh, that I can at least provide. Um, I really want to thank uh, Brightbot for hosting this for us. Um, it's a great opportunity to really get together with people that have been through the experience and people that are going to go through all of these experiences and really put them together. Uh, with that, it'd be awesome if uh, any of you could go to brightbod.com and sign up and ask your questions. Simply, it's super easy. Go online, go to the website and record yourself asking questions that you want answers to and somebody with experience or that has been through it will same thing hop on there and answer them for you so it's a great way to do q and a and it's how it really makes this whole thing live and work for all of us uh, so yeah let's uh get started um, I have a quick kind of uh, PowerPoint presentation for you-ish. It's more mainly so the uh, talking points that I'm going to go through, and we'll do that for about 20 minutes, and then I am open for uh, any and all of your questions, and if there are more things that we can cover, we can always do this again. So let's start. Uh, let all right, so Hodgkin's lymphoma and the benefits during exercise of exercise during treatment. So first of all, uh, if you don't know, or here's a brief description of what Hodgkin's lymphoma is, it's a type of cancer, and it's a type of cancer that affects your immune system, your white blood cells. It attacks simply the one thing that your body is doing to help keep you healthy and um, free from illnesses. And unfortunately, it, it attacks that. But there's a lot of things that you can do to combat or fight um, the cancer itself. Uh, and one of that, one of those things is uh, exercise. Um, so most people that have Hodgkin's have to go through chemotherapy or radiation. Um, it's the only current known way um, to provenly get rid of cancer via Hodgkin's lymphoma. Well, unfortunately, that also makes you extremely tired and run down and not feel good. But the great thing is, is exercise actually does the complete opposite. Um, endorphins really give you the energy that you need and essentially boost your immune system and just give you that vitality of life and happiness while you're going through something that is so in essence shitty. <clears throat> Which begs the question and people ask all the time, is exercise okay? Now, I'm not telling you to go run a marathon, um, though people do. Uh, yes, exercise is fine. There's ups and downs and certain things that maybe you should steer clear of, um, but exercise is more than okay. And it, even though I'm not a doctor, it is uh, typically recommended uh, by doctors to exercise on the regular. Um, so <clears throat> here are benefits. Um, one, it reduces stress. Um, <clears throat> like, you're going through the midst of one of the most stressful situa excuse me, situations of your life, and exercise is proven to reduce stress. 
it also, as I was saying earlier, it boosts your white blood cell count. Um, so the essence of what you need to stay healthy and not get sick, um, exercise does that. Uh, it also reduces the side effects um, from chemo and re radiation. There's a lot of just shit that happens with chemo and radiation, uh, such as nausea and um, not being able to go to the bathroom or muscle cramps. And um, it makes you tired. And surprisingly, exercise really eliminates for me um it completely eliminated uh some of the side effects such as nausea i never had to take nausea medication the entire time is it proven that it was was the exercise well no i didn't do an actual study on it but i did it on the regular and i never had those things happen to me um it reduces pain uh, it is proven that exercise reduces pain. It makes you stronger, and the stronger you are, the less pain that you feel. And one of the hardest things to do is when you are so exhausted and tired and can't even walk around the block is to get up and walk around the block and actually get that exercise in. Um, but the more you do it, the less tired you feel. And it's a pretty phenomenal thing to go through. Um, on a Friday, I would have chemo, and on a Monday would be my most tired day. And those two days in between that I actually went for a run, um, I noticed that I had much more energy uh, that Monday after when I was going through that struggle. Um, also, uh, <laughs> kind of funny is that exercise also revs up your sex drive. Um, this is a really hard thing for you and a partner to go through. And the last thing that you want it to affect is your physical relationship. And as long as your doctor says it's okay and you're being safe, um, Participating in sex is an absolute fantastic thing to do, and it is a great form of exercise. So, I mean, you kind of—it's kind of a two-in-one. There, you get the benefits of both. <clears throat> so, what exercises are actually best? Uh, there are a lot that you should probably stay away from. Um, I wouldn't honestly participate in things like CrossFit. Um, you are in a gym with a bunch of other people and you might want to eliminate that process of being around too many gym germs, but things like yoga at home or on a good day um, when you are feeling good and your white blood cell count is up, even hot yoga in a group then would be um, a good thing to do. The yoga itself um, helps your body process the chemo that's actually going through. And then you are getting the physical stretching that you need to alleviate things such as muscle cramps. Uh, same thing with Pilates. Pilates is very kind of yoga oriented, but it, uh, it's also based in strength as well. But it's not so evasive that you're not putting up so much strain on your body at the same time. Uh, like I said, running's great. It's not necessarily needed to do a marathon, but a 5K is more than okay. I did nine of them going through chemo. Um, did I run all of them and make my pace? No, a couple of times I even had a walk, but it got me out there, it got my endorphins going, it made me feel really good afterwards, even if I was tired. Um, I met a goal and I met a challenge and I was able to, in essence, beat that challenge, even if it was just in 20 minutes or half an hour for a five day. Um, swimming is really great as well. If 
you're having troubles with joint pain um, and things of that nature, you do have to be careful because of things of muscle crampings and that, but there's extra precautions you can take. You go to the lake with some friends, um, put on a life vest and float around, alleviate some of that stress, but also just enjoy yourself. Walking and hiking, being out in the fresh air is a great thing. You don't need to be stuffed up and uh, overwhelmed with the things around you. Uh, go for a walk, take a hike, make it fun. Uh, go for a bike ride with friends or maybe a, a, a nephew or a niece or go to the park and throw a Frisbee. Anything that you can do to get your body moving um, is going to be greatly beneficial to really, one, help your body process the chemo and what it's going and what it's doing, but also help sweat out and get rid of all those bad toxins because as soon as you want to get them in your body so they can work and do well, you also want to sweat and get them out. Um, so it's kind of this in and out process uh, together. <clears throat> but that begs to ask the question, when should I not exercise? Um, and there's quite a few times. Yes, you want to get out there and do as much as you can, uh, as many days of the week as you can. Um, but if your body's just not feeling it, then you shouldn't. Um, like I was saying earlier, on Friday I had chemo and on Monday was my worst day. Usually those Mondays, I didn't exercise. I allowed my body just to sit there and rest and take the time that it needed to to recharge and regroup and re-energize. Um, other times not to exercise when your white blood cell count is low. You're gonna know this from going to your doctor because they check this on the regular. If you're anemic, um, anemic, if you don't know what that means, it's when your red blood cell count is low. Um, being that way has uh, a tendency to make you faint, um, and you'll feel that way. It's in, You'll know when you feel that way. <clears throat> you feel very tired and exhausted and um, putting more and more effort into something makes you more and more tired. Um, and as I was saying earlier, just extreme fatigue, let your body rest when it needs to rest. But if you have that inkling that you know that you can get up and go for a walk around the block or can get up and do a 5k run or play some tennis, then, then do it. Um, <clears throat> also, um, not on this list, uh, I have a tendency to stay or I had a tendency to stay away. Um, when there was a lot of people around me that were maybe like really sick. If you have a cold, maybe you shouldn't push through and um, work out that day. Uh, let your body uh, take care of what it needs to um, and just take that time and rest and relax and because that's just as important. <clears throat> All right, uh, kind of popped out of that one. Uh, but what I did, um, as I was going through this whole process, it was uh, a four month endeavor for me. Um, so four months of chemo. And I did a lot of research ahead of time. And lucky for me, uh, I was able to go through all of this in the summer. So I didn't have to worry about being cold and snow and keeping warm and all of those things. Um, but I did a lot. I, in this picture you can see, I went to the beach and I hiked a giant sand dune on a beautiful day. Uh, there's two of my 5K races in here. Um, and I also, like I said, I found yoga to be extremely um, beneficial for me, um, not just with the stressing or the stretching, but just the mental relief of stress um it really gets a hold of you mentally and you don't always realize that so taking the time to center yourself 
um, and reflect on yourself on the inside um, and exercising that is just as important as exercising the outside. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So yeah, I know I kind of went through a lot of those uh, rather, rather quickly, uh, but we are getting towards our uh, 20 minute mark of um, me talking. Um, so we can most definitely open this up for discussion. Um, and I want, I want to hear any and all questions that you might have. Um, what do you, what, what would you like to know about the experience or things that I did or things that I might have struggled with or what would you like to know? The floor is completely open for all of you. What is the cause of um, Hodgkin's lymphoma? That is a very great question. Um, there wasn't a specific known cause for me. Um, there are a variety of ways that uh, Hodgkin's can develop. Um, a lot of people talk about um, people that have had mono and that is associated with a virus called like an Epstein-Barr virus. Um, but essentially with any cancer, um, one of your cells uh, decides to mutate and go bad and then it infects another, um, another cell uh, from there and that's just within for Hodgkin's, it's all within like your um, your lymph nodes, and that's what it takes over. As to a specific reason why it happens, there isn't necessarily one specific definition for why Hodgkin's happens. Uh, how how long ago were you diagnosed? <clears throat> I was diagnosed. Actually, we're getting really close on the uh on my anniversary so i was diagnosed march 4th uh 2013 but i first noticed um the lump in my arm um around probably i would say july of 2012 and at that time i had a cold and when you're sick, your lymph nodes get swollen. Like I have a little bit of a cold right now and my tonsils are a little bit swollen. Um, so I really didn't think anything of it because it, the swelling reduced. Um, but then it came back and at that point I had a doctor's appointment and went uh, at that appointment, I just asked them to check it out uh, just by chance. And from there it led from one doctor appointment to another. So uh, the swollen nodes are pretty much, uh, is that typical of like the beginning stages? Um, yeah, actually, it's how most people realize that they have Hodgkin's. Uh, there's a few different stages. Um, there is the, what they like to call, um, let's see, uh, there's four stages and there's uh, an A and a B type. A means that you don't have symptoms and B means that you do have symptoms. Um, I had B, I had symptoms. Uh, the node is not considered a symptom. It's just considered like your first initial finding. Uh, symptoms would be things like night sweats, rapid, lo uh, rapid weight loss, um, and, uh, it's kind of funny and weird, but you get itchy legs, like your extremities are itchy all the time. Um, were you someone that exercised prior to finding out you had this? And if you were or were not, um, taking on the exercise and was that difficult for you if you were not someone that exercised? That is a great question. Um, I was somebody that was advent in exercise beforehand. Um, it just so happened that I was uh, becoming more intense into it. So the trigger of the rapid weight loss for me, um, which for me was like 15 pounds, uh, wasn't a big notification for me or something that I realized. Uh, because I was trying to lose weight. 
Um, so that was kind of a, ha, huh, I didn't realize that could be a thing. Um, yes, it was difficult, um, at least to continue. At first it was a little bit easier, but then as the chemo kind of works on your body, you get more and more tired. So um, it was a struggle to keep up with things like running 5Ks. So then I switched to just walking instead and doing yoga instead and things that were easier on my body. Um, I ran when I could and when I had my, when I had a really good day. Um, but it's not something that people should be afraid to do if they haven't been exercising prior to. So if you weren't an avid runner, I wouldn't say, hey, now is the time to get into running. But I would say, don't shy away from taking that walk because it is going to make you feel better. Uh, it is going to help you um, get through what you're currently going through. And it's also going to help um, later on down the road. It is clinically proven um, that people who exercise after going through any type of chemotherapy, it helps, um, one, make your body stronger, but two, um, helps prevent um, remission. So it helps prevent it coming back. Where did your lump, you said your lump um, appeared um, on your hand? It was in Where my on your hand? Where? It was actually right here in my armpit. Uh-huh. So uh, they did a really great job. They used one of the lines I already had in my arm to make an incision uh, to take out that node. But you have lymph nodes all along the extremities of your body. So you have them in here. Um, you have them all the way up your arm. Uh, for women, we are women and men. We both have them in our breasts as well. Um, and then they go up our legs and kind of into our groin region. So typically, when people find that they have lymphoma of sorts, they'll find them right in here. So in their armpits, and then uh, in their groin. So kind of uh, high sweat areas. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Are you still going through treatment for um, Hodgkin's? No, I am not. Uh, currently, um, currently I am in remission. Um, so I don't have any signs or symptoms right now of any type of uh, lymphoma whatsoever, but that is closely monitored for approximately five years. So in the first couple of years, you go every six months, and then after about two years, you go once a year and follow up with um, your oncologist. If there's any room for concern, they might uh, give you an MRI or a PET scan, but if you're not showing signs of signs or symptoms, or there's no lumps, then there's no reason for them to go through and give you, um, give you a scan or anything like that. So follow-ups are really easy. They are very stressful. Uh, in the first two years, it's heavy on your mind all the time because it's always the what if it does come back because it can. Um, but Hodgkin's, uh, unlike other cancers, um, has a high success rate um, in curability. Are there any kind of like particular risk factors? Like, is there a certain group that would uh, be likely to develop this or, or younger, older, or male, female, or? Uh, male and female, uh, it, it's kind of funny. The lymphoma that I had um, was a very rare type. Um, rare, the better, more curable. Uh, usually it is, um, more male driven. Um, it's like four to one. So four to four men to one, one female for male to one female. It's more prevalent in, um, and Hodgkin's develops in younger adults. So ages, I believe 23 to 35 is when it typically develops. Um, I have personally known two other people 
um, that have had Hodgkin's uh, within my community that I've either like worked with or worked in kind of like the same industry. Um, so it's not uncommon. But you said the, the treatment success rate is fairly high. Yes, yes, it's very high. Um, and like I said, uh, the more rare it is, the usually the more curability it is. Um, I'm not really sure why that is. Mine specifically was a very slow growing cancer. So I had cancer for years and I had no idea. Um, but Hodgkin's is more is a more curable form of cancer, uh, unlike not Hodgkin's. And Hodgkin's you can actually treat more than once. So if it does come back, you can treat it again. As for non-Hodgkin's, um, it's kind of a one and done type of deal. This is not something that would show up in a normal physical, like when you do get a blood test or anything like that, right? Um, <clears throat> blood test, not necessarily, unless you have extremely high or low uh, white blood cell counts, then they might look into something further um, as to why you have a higher or low white blood cell counts. But uh, yeah, most of the time, no, like it doesn't just, it's not something that shows up um, and says, hey, like, oh, look, you're, they're not looking at your cells um, for abnormalities when it comes to like your white blood cell count. Um, they're more looking for like iron levels and just the actual count number than physically looking at the cells themselves. Um, but yeah, it, uh, not a typical blood test doesn't show it up. You'd actually have to have a physical scan uh, to show like where there is like condensing or um, tumors forming. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. And, ja and Jamie, you mentioned that you asked them to do the test. Is, was there someone in your family that has, has Hunch, Hunchkin's disease or something that you requested? Um, no. Well, at the time, I didn't realize I had like a, a fourth cousin uh, <laughs> on my dad's side, two cousins away that had it years and years and years ago. But I didn't know that until um, later down the road after I was diagnosed. Uh, it was just one of those things where I went in for my annual, so my annual female exam. And because of where it was located, I was like, well, this is weird. It's right next to my breast. So one, it would be really unusual for a 25 year old to have breast cancer. But then again, it's also unusual for me to have a lump in my arm. So I had my uh, gynecologist take a look, and from there he recommended that we do an ultrasound, uh, which then turned into a biopsy, which then turned into <laughs> removing it. Um, so yeah, it was just me knowing that there was something that wasn't right, and my doctor just listening to me and saying, yeah, maybe we should check into this a little bit more. Okay. So. Limp, no, they had to remove, they did not remove your breast or anything. Nope, those are all intact, uh, thankfully. Okay. Um, I did have two surgeries. Um, one was, was the four years ago, and then I had another one about a year and a half afterwards. And it was kind of, they went in, but they didn't take out all the infected lymph nodes. They try to keep in as much um, as they can as possible. If the chemo can get rid of it, then they're satisfied because your lymph nodes produce your white blood cells, which keep you healthy. Uh, but me being paranoid, um, I, it, I, felt, it, I felt like it was bothering me and I was worried about it. And so uh, as a precautionary measure, my oncologist went in and had that other one removed later on. Turned out there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, it was still slightly bigger than the rest, but um, I mean, she did it for me as a peace of mind thing as well. And it was a very invasive surgery. So I think I was in and out in 45 minutes. It's like getting a wisdom tooth pulled. <laughs> Do you have to make any dietary changes? And if so, are you still going with those changes? Um, I didn't have to, um, but with all the research that I did, I knew it was better for me to do so. Um, 
at the time I was in my early 20s and I was uh, probably drinking more than I should. So I reduced that uh, and tried to also reduce uh, sugar levels just because sugar isn't necessarily the best thing for you. And then I also increased a lot of the like very hearty leafy vegetables um, such as kale, uh, spinach, broccoli, cabbage into my diet. Um, I do still eat that way. I feel better when I eat that way. Um, and just kind of, uh, overall am a little, am a lot more conscious about the things that do go into my body just cause I want to do what I can to prevent having any other forms of cancer in the future. So if I can eat better then I might as well. Great question. Um, question. If I'm under the impression that uh, chemotherapy would cause many people to be sad or depressed in addition to being tired. So to the extent that people do respond in that way when they have chemotherapy, I would think it'd be very difficult to be motivated sufficiently to go exercise. So what could you tell someone who's really tired and depressed and sad? Um, you know, how could someone like that exercise when all their instincts are telling them not to exercise? That is a phenomenal question and 100% true. Um, thankfully for me, I had a lot of friends um, and I made them promise me that on days that I wasn't feeling well, I had to do something and even if it was a compromise to going for a five minute walk, a 10 minute walk, um, once you get started, you're more like more likely not going to stop. Um, so you get your shoes on, you get out of the house and you do your five minute walk. More likely than not, you're going to keep going. Um, but things like support groups um, and finding a buddy or just somebody to talk to on those days that are super depressing. Um, people that have gone through it are the most motivating. Uh, I had a friend in England at the time we met via my videos uh, that I do on YouTube and we just happened to be two weeks apart uh, of going through treatment. And so we kind of kept each other in check uh, during those times um, and he was my person. Um, if I didn't have him, I think I would have maybe joined a group or a chat room or something, uh, just so I had somebody to talk to that knew what I was feeling. Um, but yeah, making somebody else, <laughs> making somebody else responsible, um, for getting up and going and doing what you need to do to make yourself feel better. I mean, you do it once and you realize, hey, like it really does make me feel better and you're trying to be your best self and get through this. Um, that, that's the best advice that I have for, for that. Any other questions, guys? You can keep them coming. We have a couple minutes left. I know you asked a lot and you were really great. We've got a lot out there. How often do you have to get checked now? Once a year. So this is my fourth year coming up. So I should have one more year uh, left on my year marks and then it will uh, expand out from there. So I shouldn't have to go see an oncologist for uh, hopefully five more years after that. So Janie, how did you how did your family feel when you told them you were diagnosed with that? Oh, they were absolutely devastated. <laughs> um, my family doesn't live here. I live in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, so the lower portion of Michigan, and my family lives all the way up in the UP. And I called my mom. Of course, I was crying. She started crying, and then she bought a plane ticket and flew down here uh, the next day to spend the next two weeks with me uh, to go through all my doctor's appointments and stuff. Um, I think my family took it harder than I did. 
Um, I was their rock and their strong point through everything. Um, I had to be, they're, they're very high stress. <laughs> they're the ones that have given me gray hair. Uh, but yeah, I think it was harder on them than it was on me. I went into kind of a fight mode and just powered through it. Uh, the rest, um, the mental stuff for me didn't come until later, um, like the year mark when I was like, oh no, is it going to come back? Is my, is my doctor's appointment going to be okay? Uh, that's where all the stress came for me, but the whole process of going through it, like it was just move forward, get through this step by step by step. Thank you. And that's definitely another topic we can do another time too, is the effects of chemo on family. It, it's really hard on the people that are around you. Okay. All right. Well, I think we are getting to the end. Um, so we can wrap things up. If anyone has one more question, I'd be happy to answer it. And um, I mean, you can always shoot out more, thing, more topics that you want to hear about. So Janie, you do maintain a buddy, do you? I do. Oh, OK. All right. Yep, I maintain a buddy. Uh, him and I still stay in close contact together. Um, four years later so we do check-ins with each other every now and again um we'll have random realizations of hey this is how i feel do you feel that way and usually uh nine times out of ten we're we're feeling the exact same thing at the same time uh which is phenomenal um but yeah uh maintaining a buddy years down the road i find is really helpful okay great question guys is it um, London or he visit Kalamazoo? Well, he used to live in uh, Wisconsin, which is funny. Oh. Uh, yeah, he used to be a camp counselor in Wisconsin and I was a camp counselor in Michigan. So we had a lot to talk about besides oh. all the cancer stuff as oh. well. Uh, we haven't physically met yet, but I know it's something oh. in our docket for this next year. So if oh. that happens, I'll definitely uh, do a video of it. That's for sure. Well, good luck with that. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for all joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, keep the questions coming and I will be doing another webinar here in the future too. So if there's anything you want to talk about, you can always reach out. <laughs> Thanks guys. Bye.